Well, he said, oh, I want to make his dead. He, he didn't say it like this. Oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I want to make fun. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mic stand just broke. This is totally being part of the Yo, podcast. Okay, all right, let's stand up for this one. It, it didn't break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 7 of the Steeler Culture Podcast presented by SteelYingers.com and a part of the Steel City Podcast Network, always joined by Cold Steel Justin Ostot of SteelYingers.com. We have a very interesting episode for you guys today where we'll be discussing could the Steelers be trading up into the first round and for who? Now before we actually get into any discussion, we have a few announcements to make. You guys may have checked on the channel we will be live for the NFL Draft. The plan is to be live all three days, but night one, the stream is already up and scheduled for night one of the NFL Draft, which should be very fun. I cannot wait. It's going to be a crazy night for sure. It's going to be just like it always has been, a little different. We're not in Pittsburgh this year. No, we're not. Uh, but nonetheless, it's going to be a good night. We're going to have a, a great time. Night. Yes, as always. I'm very excited. Um, and what I'm also excited for is uh, if you guys are following us on Twitter at Steel Twins, and that's still Yenders, or if you guys have checked in the community tab, we have two giveaways running right now. They are live on the Steel Yenders website. There is one that we are running for the draft. Um, actually, two we're running for the draft, um, but more so one that is re- in relation to the draft. I think night one, we will announce the winner of a Najee Harris signed jersey and a 2023 Steelers draft hat which could be very similar to this one, which is beautiful, by the way. We will leave it up to the winner to select um, what style they want. Because I know not – like, you like that particular style. I'm more like what I have on. Yeah. I don't know what to call it. Snapback, but, right? Yeah, snapback or whatever. But you guys will be able to decide. And there's also two different styles. Uh, there's a black version and the one that Dan is wearing currently. So, And I definitely want to get the black one as well. So, But, yeah. yes. Uh, That's the one I'll be getting. Yeah. Um, But the winner will be getting a Najee Harris signed jersey and their choosing of a Steelers draft hat for this year. I think that will be announced night one. The the giveaway is already up. You can uh, check it out on Steel Yenders, at Steel Yenders on Twitter, or just check the community tab. Uh, We'll continue to post it throughout the days as as the NFL draft creeps up. Same thing for the 10K subscriber giveaway that us, the Steel Twins, are doing, man. It's a big one. It is a big one, and we had to go big with this one. Personally, my favorite steer of all time, Heinz Ward. We are giving away a Heinz Ward signed jersey in appreciation to all you guys subscribing and supporting us for all the years. Um, that will be exclusive to pretty much everyone publicly, but there is a twist for STN members, man. STN members will have a greater chance at winning. The more entries you put in, the greater chance you have. STN members will have five extra entries by putting in a specific code, but that is only exclusive to STN members. So if you want a a higher chance at winning that, just join the membership. It's only $1.99 a month. Damn near free. And you guys get five extra entries and giveaways for STN members will be happening every three to four months. So that's a nice little perk that is not official when you search the the join option, but that is something we're going to add for sure. Exactly. you guys are going to be changing up things for sure over the next few weeks yeah. and even months uh, heading into the, what, 2023 NFL season. Yeah. So, But not only are we going to be live for all three days of the NFL draft, we will be having two giveaways for the first two nights. Mm. Again, it's going to be the Najee Harris signed jersey and the, and the Steelers draft hat and the 10K giveaway, which is a Heinz Ward jersey. Both giveaways are already up. They're live right now. I'll put the links in the description as well as pinned at the top of the comment section. But you guys can continue to look at it via Twitter at Still Twins and at Still Yenders, and definitely check the community and tab. And please, for the love of God, follow us on Twitter. We say it all the time, and I never see people coming over and following. If you're not on Twitter, you should definitely consider doing so. It is literally, and I know Rob speaks from existence. He's not big on Twitter, but guess what? He's on there now. Yeah. Why? Because Twitter, despite the fact what you want to say about you know who, um, it's just, it's the best platform for news. So it is, and it's also a good platform to get immediate reactions, and right? Which is why we use it exactly, and of course to promote our brand out there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But we're gonna get into today's discussion, man. Could the Steelers trade up in the first round? Uh, but for who? Who do you think we should trade up for? I think man? me and Rob's been talking about it off stream all week. Christian Gonzalez, you brought it up too, actually. Yeah, Chris, so. Christian Gonzalez, who is arguably the top corner in this draft class, probably gonna be the first one off the board. He's not gonna be there at seventeen. We know that. It's a pipe dream. It is a huge pipe dream. And so is for one of my guys, 
Paris Johnson. We'll get into that a little later. But let's focus on the cornerback talk, man. You know, we already made a, a, a podcast episode regarding safety, and the Steelers did sign Keon Uniel as well as extend Casey. So we all know where that position holds I in the draft. I think that points, and I don't want to get too far off the cornerback, just briefly I want to mention. Yeah. I think those picks, because some people are thinking those guys are starters, and, and Casey could be. He could be. But I think this points that they're going to go later because there is some safeties that we all agree would be really good, like Battle. Yes. Battle's a great target for the Steelers. So they might go later in the draft to grab another safety to compete for that starting role. Yeah. And with the signing of Keanu Neal, it doesn't pigeonhole themselves to have to take a exactly. safety early than there. they probably want to, unless it's, it's best player so available. It's so freaking smart of the Steelers to yeah. do that. And, 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 sa- and safety's not the only position they did that, too. They did it with corner to a degree. They did it with linebacker, yep. defensive line with Brandon Fihoku, who they brought in. Oh, man. Who, who's, who's a big, big guy? guy huh? He's a big guy. He's a great run stuffer. He was for the Chargers. He, he, he is a Steeler. Uh, he was recently interviewed on another podcast, uh, which I definitely think you guys should check out. Uh, it's a great freaking interview. Um, and he, he, just the way he talks, he sounds like a Steeler. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what he's able to do in the black and gold. And he talks about it. He's not a guy that's going to, you know, get out there and, and do the flashy stuff. He, yeah. Quote, unquote, he literally said that. Yeah. Um, but that's we don't need that from a defensive tackle, right? No. And when's the last time think, we had think, a guy? Like I this? think we have enough explosiveness on the defense with Watt, Hayward, we talked and about it, yeah. yeah. So we, we, we just need a gap filler. We need and a that's ga- something that he can fill that we role. We need a run stuff for that's something he's great at. He's gonna get a tremendous opportunity here. To compete with Montrevis Adams for that starting position potentially. So and, and it points us back to cornerback now. Yes, because because of all the, the signings the Steelers have made, right? Uh this might give them the ability to sacrifice some picks to trade up for a guy that they know won't be there at 17 to address a position we know the Steelers are going to have to address long-term, like corner. Gonzalez, like I said, arguably the best one. And I'll, it, I'll even throw in a Devin Witherspoon. I, I'm, I'm honestly going back and forth with which one's number one. I mean, they're that close. They're, they're Exactly. They're the, that close. They're both competitive, physical. They're great corners. You can make a, an argument for either of them to be the number one. And... Gonzalez, he actually visited the Steelers for top 30 visit Thursday. Yeah. So there is tremendous interest there. So could the Steelers trade up for Gonzalez? Very likely. He's actually one of the few players that is worthy of trading up. You know, a guy like Devin Bush a couple years ago. We know why they did it. Looking back at it, poor move. A guy like Gonzalez is truly worth the extra picks. Yeah, um, I, we we have this, this thing with the Steelers, and Mike Tomlin specifically, where – he does have a track record of not being so good at drafting corner, but there has been some changes, which we obviously know about now. Yep. Colbert's not here anymore. He was a big part of that, and I think that gets overlooked. Yeah. It gets overlooked a little bit. You know, yeah. a lot of the blame is always on Tomlin, and rightfully so. Not taken away from that, but, you know, I, I think that's something we need to consider going into this draft. It is going to be different because we got a lot of different guys putting that board together. Mm-hmm. And not just in the, the draft room, but in development for, for the position. Grady Brown, our DB coach, yeah. or our secondary coach, uh, Terrell Austin, you know, our, our, our defensive coordinator, you know, they've ever since they've came in and they've worked with the defensive backs, it's it's been a different story in terms of development and progression. Oh, which, you've seen it over a course of, I don't know how many years now, two, two years or so. Yeah. And just straight up play on the field. I mean, for example, Cam Sutton. He was in. He was a very good yep. player, outstanding player for the defense, and he just got a big, big contract for the Detroit Lions. So there is no fear in taking a corner this year. No. Uh, my only argument with trading up for a corner, now, b- believe me, a guy like Witherspoon, a guy like Gonzalez is truly worth it, right? They both had elite years last year. That's a guy you, ha- if you want to, f- if you want to solidify a corner for the long term, that's how you do it, right? Guys like that. But we all know corner is stacked. So do the Steelers want to sacrifice picks to trade up for a position that they know they could still address later because of how deep it is? Right. And I'll go down the list of names. You guys already know, but just just in just an argument for the for the for, for the reason. Um, like I said, Witherspoon Gonzalez, top two. Joey Porter is a popular name at 17. Emmanuel Forbes, Keely Ringo, Deontay Banks, Cam Smith, Julius Brents, Eli Ricks. DJ Turner, Tyreek Stevenson, the list goes on. Yeah. So you guys can get uh, someone a, later. A worthy starter in the secondary. If, if they want to wait for corner, if they don't want to rush corner, they can still sit back and, and take one later. 
But at the same time, if you do want to just solidify it for the future, trading up is definitely worth it. Right. Um, but I will also argue, not only because corner is stacked, if you want to trade up for another position, I feel like tackle is a little more, a little bit more valuable because unlike corner, the 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 tackle depth, uh, the tackle talent in the draft is not as superior. Right. There's a significant drop off after the top three left. Especially tackles. when it comes to the left tackle position specifically. Yeah. There's a significant drop off. And you look at what the Steelers did in free agency. All they did was really bring in LaRaven Clark. And he's a debt piece. He's not a guy that's going to compete with yeah. Dan Moore or push more to his limits. Right. Tackle hasn't really been a position that we've 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 explored. We tried to get Orlando Brown, but we didn't fill that hole. Tackle's the only position to me that I feel like that if they're going to trade up, it's going to be tackled. And we talked about, me and you talked about this off stream, uh, which we do often, and I'm probably going to keep mentioning it, so sorry for that. We, but, do, um, it, uh, we do it a lot. We do it a lot. But I have to, I have to say that because to the viewers, I want them to understand that we've had, we have these discussions often. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence about it. We're, we're kind of disagreeing on some of this. I'm starting to lean towards them not going tackle because I have this weird vibe that they're really trying to get guys that are cheap – you know, that are going to come in and maybe surprise us, okay. right? I'm not saying they're not going to go for a tackle. I just don't know if it's in the first round anymore. I don't know. See, Unless there's somebody like a Paris Johnson there, obviously. Then that's a different discussion or that, Jones. That or, is obviously uh, my personal pipe dream. I think that's all of our pipe dreams, really. I mean, uh, yeah, Gonzalez would be great, but... I, I also wanted Creed a few years ago, yeah. and we. Uh, I say this often. Look how that turned out. I know. It didn't work out for me, so... Could this be another Creed situation? I don't know because, again, we have different people in that, that war room, the draft room. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, you know, it really truly does depend who's there at 17. There, there's a multitude of positions they could take, but it's all a matter of how their draft board is set and who is there. Right. We know Andy Waddle pri pri prioritizes the offensive line. Or just the trenches in general. Yeah, he does. So, Which is why we've seen them go after so many targets in free agency. And that's why they brought in so many – guard specific right. guys guard center guys for top 30 visits i just feel like my gut's telling me that with with this in particular there's got to be some smoke screens that's what i'm thinking and and because and you make a great point you know he is going after that's always been his thing his offensive line i just feel like it could be a smoke screen because they focus so much on free agency do yeah. they really Focus so much in free agency and then also do the draft. I've I've thought about that. I'm thinking that that might be a smokescreen for a potential trade down scenario where right. that's at 17 or most likely at 32 because obviously that's the, that's the first pick of day two. We and know it, guys are going to drop out the first round. Yeah, there are going to be so many teams that are going to be throwing offers at us. Oh, they are. They are. They probably are. We we talked about that too. I think they already are. Yeah, 32. Specifically, because this is how the draft goes, right? Guys fall out of the first round for some odd reason. There's going to be so many hungry teams that are going to want to get their guy immediately. I mean, that could be at edge as well. That could be a guard. That could be a corner. I mean, I do agree. I think some of those visits are definitely a smokescreen option. Obviously, Steelers are doing their due diligence, but it has to. I think it has to do with the fact that a trade might be in the works. Not only because the Steelers could use extra picks because of how many holes we have in the, in the the the, the drop off from our fourth round pick to the seventh round pick? We have nothing in between there. No, but let's be honest, man. Andy Wilde does kind of like to make some magic happen in the draft. He likes to do some trade options, or that's trading up, potentially trading down, which might be a little bit more likely. But honestly, man, it seems like the Steelers are pretty focused on getting their guy. We don't know who that is. They could sit patiently at 17 and hope someone falls or just take someone just, who's, who's available there, or they could trade up and get their guy like a Paris Johnson, like a Gonzalez, like a Witherspoon, like someone we're not even thinking of. Dude, I'll be surprised if they don't make a trade. I know. Whether it's up or back. I will be surprised if they sit still like they always have as tradition goes, with the exception of, of course, Devin Bush. But yeah. yeah. Um, but this I'll is an entirely shocked. new uh, front office. It is. And we've already seen them do things that are out of the norm, right? And you keep mentioning it. He likes to get aggressive. And I, I can't remember who it was, so I'm not going to put a stamp on this. But I'm I'm pretty sure it was either Khan or somebody recently said, you know, they expect the unexpected. Yes. Not quote unquote, but something along those lines. Khan, so, Khan said they're leaving all options on the table. There you go. That's the, what it the, was. They've, they've already... They've already thought out so many options throughout the draft. It's it's crazy that 
they're really open to anything. Yeah. And I truly believe that, which makes me excited, but also irritates me because I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know where they're neither going. Neither of us, neither of us have any idea which direction they could go, who they could select, what position they prioritize first. But that's the exciting part. Yep. And this is why we cannot wait until draft time. We're, we're, we're about two and a half weeks away. But two and I, a half weeks. I will add to this when it comes to uh, the potential trade-up rumors or the trade-up thought. If they trade up, I feel like they're going to have to back end the trade because uh, you know they, they have something they haven't had in, in recent years, which is four picks in the top 80. They have picks real close together, which is a great thing. Do they want to sacrifice some of those picks to trade up, or, or are they going to have to back end it to maintain their current picks but still trade up at the same time? Are they willing to sacrifice some 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 later picks for next year or? I'm a little hesitant about them messing with that 30 second unless it's something that you just can't yeah decline. See, I think with the 30 second pick, whether someone falls, it's a luxury pick. Someone could fall right into our laps, or you know a team's going to offer us a lot for it. Mm -hmm. It's a great spot. Thank you, Chase Claypool. Thank you, Bears. <laughs> so the Steelers can strike. With anything with that pick, they can do. They have a lot of power with that pick. They do, man. So much power, but I just can't help but feel like if if the if the offer is not very favorable to the the Steelers, I'm holding on to that one. So am I. Because we talked about these trades uh, many times. A lot of mock drafts we've done that we didn't release to the public. Um, every time the thirty second pick comes up, I get a little queasy because like. It's such an important pick. Yeah. It really is. And I know what we got, 49, and we got we got some picks there in those first three rounds, but I don't know, man. That that 30-second one just it feels too special. It does. And like so, I, like we said, you know, the Steelers have a lot of power with that pick. And you know talent's gonna fall at the first round. So again, all options are on the table. Khan said it, everyone in the front office said it. So come come draft time, it's gonna be crazy. Um Maybe they use that 30-second pick to uh, gain more picks, or maybe they do sacrifice that pick to trade up. I don't know. They have a lot to work with it. Uh, it's, it's all a matter of, of how everything goes down come draft day, come April 27th and 28th. So it's, it's going to be an exciting time. But uh, honestly, man, trading up really, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's something that the Steelers don't do often. Um, but, I think when it comes to a big position of need. Yeah. You know, similar to what we did with Devin Bush, because linebacker was a big need after what happened to Shazier and the yeah. play of linebacker the year Shazier didn't play. They could do it. But they I really honestly, could. I feel like if they're going to trade up, it's going to be for a left tackle. Not only because they didn't really address it in, in free agency yet, and they're, they're really sold on replacing Dan Moore. If they have to stick with him, they will, but none of us are in favor of that. Neither are the Steelers. <laughs> Neither are the Steelers. So if they're going to trade up, it's going to be for a left tackle, in my honest opinion. They already got Pat Pete. They got Levi Wallace. They can draft corner later because of how stacked it is. The drop in left tackle after the top three is significant. And it's a real so, big risk to sit there at 17 and literally pray that one of them falls when yeah. that is a very and unlikely not, possibility. Because you look at the teams you know, ahead. There's the Bears. There's the Jets. There's the Patriots. A lot of teams could pick tackle, man. I, I, I'm so confident in that that I'll even put this out, man. This is how confident I am. If Paris falls to the second round, I will oh retire from the, talking Steelers. There is no way. There is no way. <laughs> uh, there's a great. There's a greater chance Brian Branch falls at 32 than Paris Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Good point. Dude, yeah. Paris Johnson's gonna be a top 10 pick, and, and we're gonna put it out there right now, if. If there's two or three players that are worthy of trading up for the Steelers in terms of positional need, it is Gonzalez, Paris Johnson, and Slash Witherspoon. Mm. That's my honest opinion. It's hard to disagree with that there. really is when, when, uh, when you look at the positions of need and the guys that are projected to go very early. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just uh, that's how we feel. And, again, anything's on the table. Anything could happen. This is a different front office, and they've already made moves that aren't still alike. They didn't for agency, so we'll see, Definitely, uh, and, and as far as the viewers, definitely let us know in the comments. I, I'm very curious to see what everyone's thinking as far as, like, trade-ups, trade-downs. I'll even uh, add Give this. us your scenarios. N not, not just trading picks. A potential player they could trade. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Good point. I, th I think I know where you're going with I this. mean, come on. He's the most expendable player on this team. He is no longer a starter on the team. He has no role on this team. If he's going to be in every game and active – then why even have him? You might as well keep Kendrick Green for that very same reason and still get a potential <laughs> pick. 
I'm serious. Get a potential pick out of this guy because of his experience. Rob, Rob's not having that, dude. I, I, I brought the no. PlayStation over the other week, <laughs> right? We're just sitting. We're not even playing franchise mode. It's just play now. Yeah, I literally signed a <laughs> random stranger just to cut Kendrick Green. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to keep Kendrick Green. There's no point. The but, man started 15 games in his first year at center, to which he sucked at. Yeah. He was replaced by C.J. Hazenur, who's now going to the Giants. Best of luck to him. Yeah. Kendrick Green, who was a third-round pick, got replaced for, by an undrafted free agent. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all you need to know. And, a, and he, he made the roster for some reason. I don't know how. To be in every I don't game, know why. To, to be in every game inactive. But it was pointless. He you was were, there for a roster spot. You were better off giving Anthony McFarlane that roster spot. I agree. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to keep Kendrick Green, but if you're going to throw that argument, oh, why don't we keep Dotson for depth? Why don't we keep Dotson for an every game inactive? Do the same thing for Kendrick Green. That's what he did last year. Kendrick Green. Kendrick Green. Uh, Kevin Dotson has more value for a trade option than Kendrick Green ever will. Uh, only because Dotson started the last two, three years, mm-hmm. and he no longer has a place on this team. I think we can get a decent pick for him. I don't know what Khan could finesse out of teams. I think we can get a nice fourth, fifth round pick out of the guy to make up for that gap between the fourth and seventh round. But I, I think we can just get some out of him. And or, I think or, I think there's some favorable teams that could you know be looking to to use his assets. Yeah. Or if if it comes down to a potential trade up or a trade back, we could throw that in there to get to gain an extra pick for later. We could just to kind of like sweeten the deal a little bit. There's just no need for Kevin Dotson on this team. No. I it, mean, the Steelers, they, they did not hesitate to move on from Kevin Dotson whatsoever. They saw say a mile in for agency, and Andy Wilde was like, that's my guy. We got to get him. Same thing with Herbig. Exactly. So we're just going to throw it out there. It's just I, I'm not going to rule out anything, including a potential trade of a player. But when it, when it comes to that option, he's the only one that makes sense. Well, well we, we talked about it all week doing the mock drafts. It made a lot of sense to trade him and get extra capital or actually package him into a trade deal yeah. uh, to get a higher pick, which we did. And it always came down to the Seahawks. So, I don't know, maybe. But they, I've, also, I've also been looking at other teams. That out. There's teams like the Buccaneers because they have no guard. No. they they try. I think they traded away Shaq Mason or released him, whoever. Yeah, so they have no... Really, I uh, think there's still the the Falcons too, or the Cardinals that could use his assets. You yeah. know, they use his starting ability. You know, there's teams out there that could uh, uh, try to explore his his experience. Yeah, give him a, a second chance, a last chance opportunity because this is last year in his rookie contract. And, and, and I've said this too before. I mean, sometimes players, not very often with the Steelers, as far as like players leaving us and going elsewhere, uh, very rare do they go anywhere else and 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 be productive. But uh, it's not necessarily impossible. You know, a guy like Dotson could go to another team and revive his career, you know. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just saying, like, I mean, listen, that, maybe that, he steps up with another team. Yeah. And that, that's a really high possibility. It really is because he showcased some upside in his rookie year. He just never really reached yeah, that high ceiling strength. we all thought. But if he goes to another team and succeeds, you know, I mean, props to him. It's just we don't need him anymore because of the people that we brought in. Exactly. He's so, no longer needed. So why not get some value out of him, which I think he holds a little bit because of experience. Exactly. So he could be something that we sweeten to deal with, whether that is just gaining an extra pick for later day three or to uh, trade back or trade up. Again, all options are on the table. So that's how, that's how we feel about potentially trading up or just trading in general for the draft. It's all very likely, and I'm not ruling it out. Now, moving on, man, what you want to talk about? I think I want to talk about the hiring of our new assistant, offensive assistant, Glenn Thomas. It's an interesting thing because, um, and I'll keep my, my portion brief, but could this guy be brought in, you know, to potentially fill Matt Canada's role if he doesn't pan out this season? Potentially. Uh, my only issue with that is, now, I know, I know, I know, oh, he's not an in-house promotion. He was just brought in. Well, we said the same thing about Matt Canada, and exactly. he was still an in-house promotion. Um, that might be my concern, is Canada might not work out. He already hasn't. But, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Yeah, he, sorry, man. He, like, he, <laughs> I'm still keeping... For all those optimistic people, he might, <laughs> might not work out. Uh, <laughs> and then they could bring it. They, they brought in Glenn Thomas, man. A lot, has a lot of experience. Over He's 20 a, years of coaching experience in the NFL level in the... The college level. Recently, yeah. uh, he was the uh, Arizona State offensive coordinator, and yeah, Arizona State offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. But I mentioned the NFL experience. 
He was an offensive assistant and quarterbacks coach for the Atlanta Falcons through 2008 and 2014, throughout the time where Matt Ryan first came into the league, and he had targets like Tony Gonzalez and Roddy White and Michael Turner, and uh, I believe it was Julio Jones who initially yeah. came in. That was before uh, Matt, that was before Matt Ryan's MVP year. So yeah, he has a decent resume. He's coming as an offensive assistant, which is a little interesting. But I think that's something that a, quite a little honestly, interesting is a lot of interesting. It kind of speaks in itself. It speaks volumes. Like the Steelers don't trust. A certain person. Now I'm not. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying they don't. No. But, no. But no. Here's it. All right. Let, let's. Are add you? Little, are you not saying it? Uh, well, hold on. Let's add a little fuel to the fire. Right. Matt Canada did not go to any pro day this year. None. Zero. He's an offensive coordinator coming back in Kenny's second year. He went to zero pro days. Why? Is that official? Is that fact check? Oh, yes. I haven't heard fact anything. Checked? I haven't heard anything about him going to the pro mm-hmm. days. You know somebody in the comments now, is going to. He, he went to pro days last year. Somebody's going to be. He went to pro days last year for quarterback reasons. He went to zero this year. Yeah. As far as I know. I could be wrong on that, but I heard nothing of him going to pro days. Our defensive coordinator went to many pro days, including Penn State's. Cannon went to none. Th- is that because... I don't know. He could have been staying in the Raptors, man. He could have, I'd could, say, maybe. He could be up there somewhere. Yeah, he could have been on the zip line. I don't know. Maybe he's coming <laughs> in. I don't know, man. But bring Maybe in. he was spying Jordan Addison. We yeah. don't know. <laughs> could be. Maybe that's where he was. Maybe it was a, a smoke screen, you know? Maybe. Maybe he had a, a mask on or something. I don't know, man. Uh, Hide his identity. But bringing in Glenn Thomas as an offensive assistant is something that Canada does need because Canada can't do it himself. That's already been proven. And we need an assistant on offense. We need somebody that's down on the yeah. field too. Well, let's yeah, because he's in the sky box. He's in the sky box, which I've never necessarily frowned upon. But there's a difference between being up there on a headset, phone, whatever the case may be, and then being actually down there in the in the midst of you everything. You can't truly communicate, F- right? You're physically there. You're able to touch these po- like put your hand on the shoulder pad, say da 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 da. Yeah, it's different when it's like virtual or digital. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Well. I think this also fills in more of the uh, of a Brian Flores type assistant that we had last year. He was the assistant defensive coach last year. Right. We didn't have an assistant offensive coach. No, we didn't. Now we brought one in and Glenn Thomas, which I, I don't know exactly what he's going to add to the offense. I mean, there's just not really much to predict or or to say on that. But um, but when it comes to the offense that has a lot of youth and a lot of potential. And with an offensive coordinator that us three are not very optimistic is going to improve, it's something that still is needed to add. Yeah. And this guy could very well be groomed to replace Canada. It's a Steeler like move. They've done it how many times? They did it with Fickner after Todd Haley left. Now, let's say he, because you even said about our quarterback coach, Mike Sullivan, about he, how he might get promoted when, yeah, when they could have, leaves. Now that you mentioned it, they could have two candidates to promote from within, which. Which I can't stand that stuff. I, I don't can, even want to think about it. I can't stand pro- promoting from within. No, because let's be honest, man. And, and I hate to look back at the past, but this is irrelevant in, in to our argument. Ever since LeBeau and uh, what's his name, Haley left, right? Every single defensive coordinator and offense coordinator we've had has been an in-house promotion. Now, did they come from outside? Surely. Matt Cannon came, came from outside for a little bit. Uh, but it's, everyone, like, it's like a, it's like a little trick, yeah, you know. So did Terrell Austin, right? He was the Bengals offense or defensive, defensive coordinator. coordinator. He came in as a secondary coach and then was promoted to defensive coordinator. So yeah, like guys like Canada and and Austin, they weren't groomed like a Keith Butler was for like fifteen plus years, like or Randy Fe- Fickner. Yeah, for like ten plus years. Uh, but it's still an in-house pro- promotion nonetheless, and it's it's irritating because it hasn't found much success. Shout out to Austin. I mean, he's done well for the defense. We can all agree on that. They yeah, just, his first year as defensive coordinator, the, the secondary led the NFL in interceptions. Yeah, so, I mean, that that's working out. Dare but, I say he did better than Butler. Yeah, he did. So. He did. So you got to give him credit there. Um, but nonetheless, the in-house promotions, it's just a lazy fill-in that the Steelers have done for years. And if this is another example of that, and this is them pretty much knowing Canada's going to leave and then already finding his replacement and a guy like him, it's just... Lazy to me. And and by the way, this guy's NFL experience uh, is very slim. Yeah, you know very I mean? slim. He, he's, been he, a, he's more of a college coach, which is kind of just like Matt Yeah, because he initially left the Falcons in 2014. Since yeah. then, he's been with the likes of Temple and Baylor and UNLV and recently Arizona State. Yeah, he's, he's been, been all, in the NFL for almost 10 years. Yeah, he's yeah. been out of the NFL since 2014. So is and that, even then, I mean, again, it was it was very minimal. 
Yeah. You know, it, there's not a long track record of NFL experience in yeah. comparison to his college experience. So right. So I, I don't just know, something to point out. So I don't know what writing on the wall this potentially has, um, but. But if, if, if this truly is what we're talking about, him being groomed to replace Canada, why not just get rid of Canada? Why is he still here if this is your backup plan? I don't know. Right? You, just... know you know, I look back at what the commanders did with Eric Bieniemy, mm-hmm. and considering that our assistant head coach retired after several years with the team. I know where you're going with this. Was it not possible for us to offer Bieniemy that freaking position well, of... Assistant head coach well, you also, and offense coordinator. This also comes back to the Steelers being cheap. He obviously got <laughs> he got mega careful. Mo- careful now. I'm saying I'm just saying he got mega money for his position because obviously he lateraled from offensive but coordinator then I to it, one I, team I, to I, the other. But I throw it at this: you get what you pay for. Well, obviously you get what you pay for. But that's, a, that's a very true and and proven. I statement. mean, for the love of God, dude, I understand money played a big part in him going to the Commanders, but he's got Sam Howell but as also, his quarterback. But the Steelers not only don't really like to throw a lot of money, not only at players, but especially outside coaches, which is why they've maintained the in-house promotions. But look what it's done with our I offense. I agree. No, listen, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm I know, not I know disagreeing. I know. I'm just I'm, – and I know, I agree. The, the Steelers I'm starting way. to see the connection why you're a Steelers fan, bro. I really, there's a lot in common here. Dude, the, 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 the Steelers tradition <laughs> is, is is annoying. It's a yeah. headache. Every offseason they do this. So, like, so in conclusion, we just hope that this Glenn Thomas sign or yep, uh, hiring isn't what we're thinking it is. Yeah. We hope we're completely wrong, but if that's the case, then. I like bringing, he, let me say this. I like him being brought in as an offensive assistant. Yes. But my fear is that they're going to groom him to replace Canada and be another in-house promotion. Because they've ha- done it in the past. And it hasn't bode well for all for our offense. Are we gonna are we gonna be pulling this up next year? Next offseason? I'm gonna say if we if we reflect <laughs> on episode seven one year later, oh my god, man. It's it's just that that's the way Rooney has ran. That's the way Tomlin has ran for pretty much since 2015. It's been aching, man. So we hope that's not the case. But as an offensive assistant. We would like to see what this guy can bring. Maybe push Canada. Maybe even help Canada. I don't know. We even had Kenny in his progression at the same time. But if we add offensive assistance to the offense, hopefully the offense runs better. That's all we can hope for. So, yeah. in that regard, we hope this works out for that factor alone. Now, did the Steelers have any uh, extra visits? We obviously know we talked about Gonzalez. You know, they brought in many other guys for top three visits. Anyone else they brought in? Yeah, uh, for throughout this week, through Monday through Thursday, they brought in a lot of prospects. Which is good. I mean, um, obviously the draft's creeping up, so they got to get their, their visits they, in. Well, they brought in a lot of corners. Which is a good. A lot of corners. <laughs> so, ooh. I guess that really just a lot solidifies everything we're talking about. The cornerbacks about. that they brought in this week for top 30 visits were Julius Brents of Kansas State. Love him. Deontay Banks of Maryland. Well, that's, that's no surprise with the Maryland connection and Tomlin. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson, of which Miami. by the way, Banks is being rumored to be a, a top. Yeah, first I mean round his pick. stock's kind of risen a little bit. You know, people have considered him potentially as a top twenty pick. Listen, we we've argued about off stream, man. Um, <laughs> off stream, off ca- excuse me, off camera. Is 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 Banks at seventeen favorable? <sighs> For me personally, the answer is no. Thirty-two I just is a feel like lo- it's a reach. It is. It's. It's. I'm not saying he's going to be like him, but it's an Artie Burns reach. Oof. And here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. That would be them panicking, like they did with Burns when they don't. When they don't have to, because one, they could get Banks at thirty-two, but also corner's so deep, you don't have to rush corner just because. Oh shit, our guy isn't there. Oh yeah, shit, yeah, Gonzalez yeah. isn't there. Witherspoon's and gone. That's why you Joey Porter went to the Ravens or that's something. That's why you like, mentioned Artie Burns because after. <laughs> After William Jackson was taking the pick before us, we we were desperate. So and we, we we went with the first guy we literally saw on the board, and that was already Burns. Now the Ravens are going to take him. Well, John Harbaugh said something <laughs> about him. He yeah. said he loves the way he plays. Well, he said, oh, I want to make his dead. He, he didn't say it like this. Oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I want to make fun. What the fuck? Oh. No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mic stand just broke. This is totally being part of the Yo, podcast. Okay, all right, let's stand up for this one. It, it didn't break. Well, Harbaugh, man, you know, he gave Joey Porter a lot of praise. And he also said, you know, he didn't directly say this, but he pretty much said something along the lines like, I would like to make his dad a Ravens fan. No. After all the torture that he caused at that team, man. I mean, you remember. That would up. be disgusting. 
And I, I would not be for that. that would be Joey, gr- do not let your son go to that garbage organization. I'm sorry. If that happens, I want a I want a Eli Manning type trade happening. I don't care where he has to go. Just don't go to that would just be filthy. I can't it, imagine I, the, do. I can't imagine the Porter name on that jersey. Or could it be Ugh. could it be the Ravens pressuring the Steelers to take Porter? Of course. That's what they do. Yeah. Them and the Bengals, we know how they are yeah. in the draft. Listen, they... the, the rivalry isn't just on the field. No, it is, no, it is, no. It is uh, obviously in the draft room as well. Yeah. Yeah, but Deontay Banks, you know, top 20, that's arguable. I feel like his stock has definitely risen You're going fi- to find some bit. people that are going to, like, go to war for, you know, the discussion yeah. of him being a first-rounder. And I- I'm preparing myself for Banks to be the, the p- potential selection at 17 if they stay. I'm not going to be... I won't be dis. I gotta say that carefully. Yes, because I don't know. I might be. I might be. I might be disappointed with that. But I would be. I'm not gonna lie to you, because I know. I, I try not to be disappointed. But because, I do. Like years ago, fans were disappointed about the Friar Muth pick, and I think he's working out. He is. And so, but it came at a cost. It but did. We all know it this. did. It did. It did. But it did. the one thing I'm telling myself throughout the draft. Um, no matter where they go at any pick early, we have to let it play out. If they go safety first, if they go whatever position first, we got to let it play out. Like, we all want tackle. They might not go tackle till like, the second or third round. We yeah. got to let it play out. Now, we also did that with Najee and Muth, and it didn't work out. It we didn't took, work out. We no. took Kendra Green and Dan Moore. Um, but yeah. nonetheless, it's we got to let it play out. Of course. And I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. I, I'm sick and tired of waiting. I know. We, to be we honest, are, I'm how getting many to we, that point. How many weeks away, man? We are two and a half weeks yeah, away. Yeah, two and a half weeks away. Which, by the way, we are recording this on Easter, so happy Easter to yeah, all Yeah, happy right? Easter, folks. <laughs> of course. And, and, and by the way, I know somebody, because we've seen this many times, for some bizarre reason, people are going to look at what we're wearing, and yes, I have Easter colors on underneath the... What's uh, wrong with that? There's nothing We're wrong living the it. Easter spirit. Yeah. Ha- happy Easter to all you guys, and happy Easter to us. So Hope you guys had a great Easter, man. Of course. De- definitely cherish the family time. But they they looked at more corners. Like I said, Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami. They also looked at Darius Rush of South Carolina. Yep. And like we talked about, Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. Uh, as well as other positions, interior offensive line. Yeah. They looked mean? they looked at a lot of players at that position, which is interesting considering of the people they brought in at that position. As a matter of fact, this this brings up back to trade talk, right? Um now this could be a smoke screen. They could be looking at guards so that they pressure teams to trade up. So they can gain extra picks. Could the Steelers be looking to trade a member of their current interior offensive line? Now, there are rumors. There's been reports and articles going out about potentially James Daniels. Makes absolutely no sense. Why nah, would you, man, I'm not doing that at all. Why would you trade your best lineman no. at 25 years old? No. Why? I will throw this out, though. Um, could they potentially trade Mason Cole? Now, I know he's going to be getting six to seven million and, 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 uh, cap this year and the dead cap would be four to five million but i still want to potentially throw it out there because yeah they are looking at interior offensive linemen more so center type prospects guys like a uh, steve avila uh from tcu a uh, john michael smith from i think minnesota yeah of course look white play out of Ohio Ohio State. state i mean they went to dinner with him as well so could they potentially be looking to trade cole could it, that? It's, could it's that possible or is could, there still there, is it also the possibility that they look at specifically center and they have him back up Cole, right? Maybe. Or could they be just looking for a potential best player available option? I mean, that's always on. That's always on the table. Uh, best player available type yeah. situation. So yeah. yeah. But the interior offensive lineman, the the interior offensive lineman that they had for top thirty visits were Chandler Zavala out of NC State. I'm not too familiar with him, but they also brought in. Osiris Torrance out of Florida. That's a big one. That's a, an interesting one. He's a big boy. I'm a big fan of him. I don't think he allowed a sack in three seasons in his college career. Yeah. Another position that they looked at for the top 30 visits, they brought in two defensive line prospects this week. One of them being Keanu Ben out of Wisconsin, who brings a lot of Javon Hargrave's vibes and aspects mm-hmm. to his game, as well as Siaki Ika of <laughs> wow. Baylor. Big that's, boy. That's that boy, man. Big, big snack 2.0, we, huh? Dude, we've been big on this guy. But big on both of them, honestly. Uh, that's interesting. Two of our favorite defensive linemen for day two. But that is interesting. interesting. As well interesting. as well as Keon White of Georgia Tech, who has an interesting college story. He initially started at Old Dominion as a tight end. 
Mm. Oh, wow. Before transitioning to defensive end, where he had a productive year his first year at that position. See, I, I'm familiar with him. I didn't know his backstory. That's actually very interesting. And he's, interesting. he's actually a freakishly athletic player. He's real good. He's still transitioning a little bit into defensive end, but I find it interesting how they're looking at that. Yeah. Now, he's labeled as edge, but for his body, he's more of a D end. Well, that position is continuing to tra- you know, transition itself. You yeah. know? We went from an era where guys were just huge monsters on the field to these more athletic, athletic agile type of players. So yeah. it, it's definitely – it's almost like the middle linebacker position as well, which I wouldn't write that off at some point in the draft. Um, I do feel like the guys they brought in are going to be fighting for the starting roles. Yeah. Uh, Homecome more specifically, but um, – yeah, I, I wouldn't write off middle linebacker at some point. Did they bring any middle linebackers? Um, not that I see. Really? N- at least not this week. Not this week, but they went to a lot of pro days. Yeah, that's right, yeah. For uh, the inside linebacker position. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, um, uh, I will say this about the, the, the defensive line or the, the edge guy specifically. Uh, the, that, the, the, the edge guys could be more so smoke screens as well, uh, similar to what we just said about interior offensive line. Uh, to which they brought one for a visit this week, him being Tuli Tui Puladu, yeah, if I pronounce that right, out of, out of USC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's interesting how they've been looking at some edge edge aspects at the same time. And it's a pretty deep edge class. And you and I have argued about it off off camera. Uh, we did it last Bud night. Bud Dupree? Well, now listen. I, I'll gladly bring him Bud Dupree. Now, yeah, listen, 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 because I thought about this throughout the week, and I brought it up to him yesterday off camera. And I wasn't having it, but go ahead. But li- listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Here's my, here's, my, here's my thinking. Here's my argument, right? I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. I would love to have Bud Dupree back with this team. Mm-hmm. To have that three-edge set with Dupree, Highsmith, and Watt once again yep. would be outstanding. The thing is, I don't know. We don't know where Bud Dupree really stands as far as his physical, his health. It's not a good. It's not a good sign that they didn't give him a contract the day he was there. That could also that, that could very also, big red flag. That could also be a, a cause of money, the amount of money they well, may want to offer. I, I have. A, I just. I don't know. My, my finger or but my it, gut. It, I keep. Saying I don't think it. it's happening. It's been a week. If they if they two bring weeks. him, if they bring him though, I it'll think be after the draft. It'll be after the draft potentially. But I think it's only going to be a one-year deal. Of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you got to look at Alex Highsmith. The guy is bound to have a big contract soon after having a breakout season. Mm-hmm. What he, I'm he will be for, a stealer. What I'm hopeful for is that they re-sign him before the season starts, like Omar Khan did with a lot of our players, well, Johnson, I'm, Boswell, those guys. Well, uh, I'm telling you right now, that is going to happen. I'm I have, very listen. I'm very optimistic it will happen because Highsmith and Watt have a great connection. You know, Highsmith is... He's proven that he belongs absolutely. here and when, deserves when a, went a, down, a contract. When Watt went down, he stepped up big time. He's Lamar Willie 2.0. Which is the opposite of Bud Dupree. Yes. Bud Dupree, and it's no, no offense to him, they work great together. But that's the thing, together. If Watt goes down, we saw Highsmith was, as you said, productive. Yes. Yeah. And that's important to point out, especially when you look at, arguably, he had a defensive player of the year type of season. Was it 14 and a half, 15 14 and a half. Something for along some those reason, lines. For some reason, he did not make the Pro Bowl. Not like that matters that, anyway, but it's, his, m- it's for recognition. More so that than defensive player of the year. But yes. Definitely Pro Bowler. And he didn't get the nod, which is absolutely criminal. It's asinine. Asinine. Yeah. And we continue to see that in this league. And we saw it with TJ Watt himself over the years getting uh, pretty much shunned. Uncrowned two-time. Three-time. There you go. He's 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 crowned one on un, uncrowned two time defensive player of the year. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm optimistic that Highsmith does get restructured. Yeah. By the way, Highsmith, man, if you're watching this, man, big fan, love you, love you. Stay with the Steelers. Yes, but there's also the possibility. But they got to pay you. They got to. There's you. a possibility. That's where I'm going. There's a possibility that he may not end up resigning before the season starts. And let's say he does have another breakout season, to which I think we're all anticipating. At that point, wow. And you and you have Bud back. Mm-hmm. At that point. You have both of them as projected free agents. There's a possibility that both of them could walk and be gone at next year's free agency. And if the Steelers let him walk, rightfully so. I'm actually starting to – I used to get upset with players when they didn't resign or whatever. Yeah. Now I'm starting to understand it, man. It really is a business. Yes. It is. And if the Steelers want to keep guys like High Smith around, they got to pay him. Or it's going to be a Sutton situation, not to compare the two because it's asinine to do that. They're right. two different positions, first mm-hmm. of all. Uh, but – if you want your key guys that you brought up through the system, you got to pay them and you got to respect them. Yes. 
And that's something that this team is going to have to start to transition towards. Well, they, I know there's tradition and stuff, and there's going to be people in the comments that are going to continue to rem remind us of things we already know, but things have to start changing. Well, the world changes around you whether you like it or not. And the same is said for football. And the Steelers got to start loosening up in that regard. Well, not to... Not to uh add fuel here, but they have been kind of disrespectful to some of their homegrown guys. You exactly. Know, the, the argument, oh, they built through the draft. Well, aren't you supposed, cool. to, aren't you supposed to keep those guys? <laughs> they disrespected Edmonds. They disrespected Sutton, right? They're both gone now. They but but you're, keeping, you're keeping a quarterback that's not even going to be the starter, let's be honest. Yeah. At a contract that doesn't really... Uh, $10 million cap hit. It doesn't really make sense when you think about what his role is going to be. So they can't do that with Highsmith, nor do I think they will. I am very confident Highsmith size signs an extension. And I'm right there with you. But I'm also speaking... I'm speaking as a possibility because I'm trying to prepare myself for what the Steelers may end up doing exactly. for the draft. I'm on your, I'm on your side. There's a possibility there. that Highsmith does not resign, and if we bring Bud back, it's more likely going to be a one-year deal. If that's the case, it's a big possibility... Highsmith and Bud could very well walk in next year's free agency. All we have is wide. Yeah. And we know how our edge depth was last year. And Highsmith stepped up, but everybody else didn't. Okay. Malik Reed was a big disappointment, and that was just about it. When it comes to edge in the draft, I would not be opposed to potentially selecting one day two. Is okay. it, This is where you guys disagree, right? I'm yes. not opposed to it because, one... It's stacked. Go ahead. You, get, you can get a real oh. good... <laughs> shut up. Come no, on. I'm going to let him finish. Let me finish. Let, yeah, me, yeah, let, me, let me speak. Let him speak. It's stacked day two. There's plenty of talent, plenty of guys. You can get a capable development and backup, but a p possible replacement for Highsmith. Mm -hmm. But say that you do resign Highsmith. And this is under the impression that Dupree does not become a Steeler again. Okay. You have him, that, that edge draft selection, to be the backup or possible replacement. For Highsmith. But if Highsmith resigns, then you have a capable rotational <laughs> edge debt piece for the next four years. Okay, but my, I, I, I entirely understand your argument, okay? I know our edge depth sucks and we need someone behind them, okay? Because they're, they're still going to get 30, 40% snaps a week, right? Yes. Um, I don't think with the amount of picks we have in the top 80... I don't think it's wise to take a depth piece with one of those picks. And I understand we your have point. so many holes on this team, like corner, like tackle, like linebacker, like defensive tackle, like safety, to take a depth piece. I know our edge sucks, okay? We watched every game. You don't have to tell me, oh, well, our edge depth sucks. No shit! Okay? You don't have to tell me. But we're not taking an edge. Depth piece. At least that's what you think. Early. That's what you think. It just. <laughs> why are you taking depth <laughs> when we have so many holes already? It's a fair question, Rob. You got to answer it. Oh, of course. I mean, I don't disagree. If with we you already there. had so many positions filled, I'd agree. Yeah. Why not take an edge depth piece in the third round, right? Maybe at 49, maybe at 80, yeah. right? But listen, not, I don't disagree with you. I agree with you about the positions. But I'm preparing myself, and I'm speaking it as a possibility right here for the episode because say something happens again to one of our edge guys, high spent for what? Knock on wood, you know? Mm -hmm. At least you have a capable guy that can step in and replace You're him right. and fill in, and your edge and your pass rush will still be at a consistent rate. You're right, but if they know they can get in an extension to Noah Highsmith, why take an edge depth so high? I feel like it'd be similar to Highsmith when he was drafted. It'd be the writing on the wall that, hey— our current guy is going to be gone, and the guy we drafted is going to replace him. And then it's the the, the cycle continues. Revolving door. It's Revolving high. door, which needs to change uh, whether they like it or not. Otherwise, and we're I just... agree. They, they need to keep high stuff. So I entirely understand your argument, but I think we have so many holes now. And I know you can't fix everything in one draft. No, okay? no, no, I no. find myself struggling to not do that in, in, in every mock draft I try to do. You're not um, the only one. I know. But... I know they can't fix every hole, but we have so many to pretty much take a a, a debt piece and I, and so early. Again, I can't say how many times. We can take I a, agree. We can take a, a, a debt piece for Edge in the fourth round, and right? I, absolutely. Maybe but, if there's a guy that, that that's just kind of too hard to pass up on. Oh, yeah, then I, I get it. I get it. But I mean, who, I, what, who, what, what guy would that be? You that, know? that could be the USC Edge rusher. That could be a... A Isaiah Mc, uh, Mc, McGreary, I think is yeah. that his name? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that could be a Isaiah McGreary from uh, oh Missouri, I think. Yeah, yeah, that could be a Nick Herbig 
Nate Herbig's brother. That could be just about anybody. Edge, I see Edge, the connection there. Edge is very, very stacked. You get a, Bi- a Byron Young. You know, I'm hearing his stocks rising out of Tennessee. Right. Yeah, I wasn't too high on him at the beginning of uh, mock season. You know, he kept showing up on my radar for some reason. Yeah. But every time I looked, I'm just like, I don't know if that makes sense. But, yeah, his stock is going up, though. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that as a yeah, I get possible it. I get scenario. It. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to prepare myself for these situations You're, because... It's, it's, it's a good way to prepare yourself. You yeah. Know? Stay open to everything. And by the way, chat, uh, or chat, I said chat. We both keep doing that. We're know, so we used to be live, live, man. Uh, but, yo, guys, th- listening, um, on YouTube specifically, go in the comments. I don't want to say whose side are you on, but which opinion do you guys... Uh, Cater towards or lean towards, I should say. Yeah, do you, do you guys think we should prioritize edge depth early, or do you think we should just fill the holes that we need now? The way I'm looking at it, with the picks we have in the top 80, I feel like all those picks need to be not not exactly long term because I mean you're not going to strike with every single pick. You're not no, gonna, no. you're not going to have a 1974 like draft. But no. all those guys were with 17, 32, 49, and 80, they got to be starters at positions we need to fill. Where that safety corner tackle D tackle middle linebacker right and anything, uh, that that's just how I feel. And with Me the first. positions I need, you know, there's guys you know potentially that could be there at those picks that you get. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, well, I, definitely go down in the comments. Let us know. I'm curious to see what you guys uh, think in that regard. Like, do they go like Dan's suggesting, which I agree with, by the way. I do think you know with all the holes we have, we have to strike at guys that can actually be impactful now. Yeah. Uh, versus getting depth or, which is something we always forget to talk about, is some of these guys are going to be groomed to become more important than what they have been. Exactly. Or, or what they're projected to be. So Very similar to what Highsmith was when he was exactly. drafted. Exactly. Yeah, so. great point. Um, but that's just how we feel about that. Uh, otherwise, I think that will close it for Episode 7. I want to talk more on defensive line, defensive tackle specifically, but I think we're going to save that for next week. Yeah, I don't we don't want to. We don't want to give everything in one. In put all one our sitting. Easter eggs in the basket. Yeah. So <laughs> very good plan, hey, dude. It's a it's a freaking um, long off season, uh, which is why some of the contents kind of died down. Yeah, I did want to touch on one thing that's important to the Steel Yenzer brand. Uh, good Steelers Morning, the podcast that I usually do and was doing on a daily basis. I think at this point, there might be a few episodes between now and, and the draft just to kind of cover some things. Yeah. But uh, after the draft, it's going to go on hiatus until probably June-ish, July, like summertime, closer to training camp. Uh, and that's only because I have a newborn child coming into the world in the neck. It's getting close. It is getting close. A little stressed out. We are a month uh, away, man. And, you know, I've also taken a, a, a summer position at a, another um, company writing about the Pirates. So, uh, But more so, it, it, it's related to the, the newborn coming into the world, and I got to be obviously all hands on deck with that. So yeah. um, I'm going to be cutting cutting some things out for the time being just until I get everything settled. But Good Steelers Morning is not going anywhere. It will be back. Uh, and, again, there will be at least one or two episodes between now and the draft just to kind of cover some things for those people that like that uh, that show that I put together. So Exactly. So mm-hmm. definitely check up for that on the Still Yenders YouTube page. Yep. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter at Still Twins and at Still Yenders. Please do, please do so. Do it! You'll get... Uh, <laughs> that was not expected. <laughs> you will get updates not only on uh, the, the draft and the live streams and all that and, 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 and Steelers News and, and the articles we're going to put up on that website, uh, but also... The giveaways will be up there. Yes, 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 yes. So if you guys want access to that, I like like we said, we'll put them in the, the, the comment section. We'll pin them at the top of the comment section, as well as in the community tab. And for the STN members, that specific code so you guys can get five extra entries will be in the community tab under STN members only. So look for that so you guys can get your extra five entries. Um, as well as, of course, it will be posted uh, on Twitter and on social media and all that. So... Definitely look forward to that. Otherwise, we're going to call this an episode. Very good episode today, yeah, boys. On- we, had, we had a great time. We had explosions and mics flying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the ham jersey, which was off camera, did almost <sighs> perish. We had a lot of uh, chaos. Near falls. A lot here. of chaos. And, and I haven't been the best today, just so you know, when you go to record or edit this. I, I, I kind of messed up on some of the cameras a little bit here. You know, yeah. I'm talking. You guys are on cameras. But well, we did take a week off. So. Yeah, it's a little rust, you know. I, I did. Um, 
want to mention this too. I think the next episode we'll we'll, we'll go live. I think we'll go yeah. live. And I think we're going to specifically talk about defensive tackle because we're yeah. going to touch on some things Rob mentioned about some visits. But, you know, because of how many positions that we're going to have to fill, a position like that might be pushed back. But I'll give you a reason why the Steelers might do that, not just because of all the holes we have, but the guys they added uh, this year, last year. So we'll, we'll discuss it next week. It should be yeah. a fun episode. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great, man, as the draft creeps up closer. So we cannot wait. Hope you guys join us for the entire journey. And uh, otherwise, hit that like, hit that subscribe, give us a five star rating on Spotify for listening. Do and it. <laughs> that's gonna be a. That's, theme that's gonna be a theme. Sorry. Wait till draft night. Oh my god. Otherwise, we're gonna call us an episode, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, we're gonna go watch the Pirates and see if they can get a win back. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, you guys enjoy your guys' holiday. Hope you guys had a great Easter, and see you in the next one. And go like, Steelers. And like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Peace. Peace!